Welcome to the lecture, Ideas of Europe. Based on Chapter 1, this lecture will give a brief overview of the ideas of Europe, starting with early modern history, followed by modern history, and concluding with the ideas of Europe in contemporary history. The concept of Euros, Europe has always been uncertain and imprecise. It has resisted clear-cut definition, developing through time and acquiring specific meanings in giving places and at certain historical moments. But it was during the early modern period that the idea of Europe became more solid and stable in the minds of those inhabiting the region. Following three principal ways of conceptualizing Europe are briefly outlined. First, Europe as a geographical, social, political and economic reality. Second, Europe as a cognitive order of political, religious and cultural ideas. And third, Europe as a named entity transmitted and discussed through representation and text and image. Europe as a geographical, social, political and economic reality. As a reality, Europe can be seen in the first place as a geographical space defined by material futures. Europe was and is a layered complexity, a social reality, a political entity and an economic trading zone. All of these aspects are determined to a large extent by geography. However, geography not only created the entity of Europe, but in the modern period also split it into sections such as those labeled Western, Southern, Nordic, Eastern, Central, and even Northwest or East Central. While Central and East Central Europe are relatively unproblematically unproblem inscribed into Europe as a continent, the positions of Russia and the Ottoman Empire have long been contested and still are today. For most of the early modern period, the Ottoman Empire covered Southeast Europe including Greece, which was increasingly regarded as the cradle of European culture. The powers in the West contested the Ottoman membership of Europe. Despite their own mutual, mutual antagonism, they felt forced to cooperate in containing an empire that they regarded as a mutual enemy. Europe as a cognitive order. This leads to the second important way in which Europe was conceptualized as a cognitive order. The emergence and the consolidation of the idea of Europe in the early modern period was predicated on the entanglement of shared notions. Notions which suggested Europe consisted of a particular political order, a particular religion or a particular culture. Speaking about Europeans implied that there were others, not just in a geographical sense. The notion of mutual proximity and distinctiveness from the rest of the world based primarily on the shared Christian religion. The notion of civilization as opposed to barbarism or paganism. But from the 15th century onwards, this sentiment significantly grew as a result of European expansion into other continents leading to encounters with different social and cultural formations. This process of self-fashioning ran parallel to the formation of specific national identities on the same period. Even though the term Europe was rarely used in sources before the 18th century, notions had appeared of superiority and distinctiveness shared by the intellectual and social elites of various European countries. When it comes to religion, the complexity of the European political world did not eliminate the prospect of a Christian Europe. In fact, the notion of Europe overlapped with the concept of a Respublica Christiana or Mundus Christianus, the idea originating in the work The City of God by Augustine of Hippo, a father of the church. This concept of a commonwealth of Christians was visualized as a unity of all true believers, subordinated to divine law and superseding political divisions within the European community. The concept Respublica Christiana could also denote the idea of a political alliance of states 
with Christian rulers, headed by the Pope. However, the colonial and subsequent missionary expansions in the 16th century greatly enlarged the Christian community and put in doubt the specific way of defining Europe. Europe in image and text. Finally, the notion of Europe was visualized through various media, such as pictures, maps, or textual conceptualizations. In the second half of the 15th century, the explosive spread of the printing press brought about a radical change in the cultural life of many Europeans. Printed books, musical scores, and cartographies became more widely accessible. In a world in which the new knowledge of the Atlantic, the Indian, and the Pacific Oceans was rapidly codified in increasing maps, the Central European cosmographers delighted potential buyers of their printing plates with the representation of distant African, Asian, or American lands, in which explorers and traders just had arrived. Until the great voyages of exploration, Europe saw itself at the center of the world, or in fact, the world, with appendixes of Africa and Asia. Since the 16th century, however, it realized that it was a relatively small part of the immense wider world inhabited by multitudes of nations, languages, and religions. Conclusion of the first part. From the beginning of the 16th century onwards, the notion of Europe as a political and economic reality became more pronounced. It acted as a geographical theater of war, already defined in political religious terms as a Respublica Cristiana, the confrontation with the new world how to define it culturally as an entity of its own. Despite the inter-Christian wars, a tradition of learning embodied by scholars and learned institutes created an entangled network of learning which was called the Republic of Letters and that grew more pronounced in the 18th century. Visually, the notion of Europe as a body were shaped in a diversity of forms and orientations. These express different political viewpoints about the centers of power, but they agreed on the idea of a more or less self-contained entity called Europe. Ideas of Europe in modern history. The 19th century, when nationalist movements rose up all over Europe, is often considered as an era of nation state. That said, the ideal of European unity remained influential and widespread, although it shifted from the idea of a European empire to the idea of a European federation. Moreover, Europe during this time became far more than a geographical term or a byword for Christianity. It became a political project. This process began after 1789 with the French Revolution and particularly the French general and dictator Napoleon, who later established a French empire compassing most of Europe based on military conquest and a system of rational governance and common civil law. The 19th century turned into a struggle of different ideological groups over the exact nature of Europe as a political project. Patterns of power in Europe. At the beginning of the 19th century, for most rulers, soldiers, and diplomats, the idea of Europe was mainly about external peace and security. To uphold these, they imagined two antithetical solutions, that of a hegemonic, pan-European universal monarchy or European empire, and that of a balance of power between various great powers within a stable European system of states. The balance of power was a more recent idea that emerged after the year 1648. Although references to a European whole, often framed as Christianity, were still quite common, the state had now become the central reference point of international politics. When in 1804, Napoleon established a new French empire to replace the almost extinct Holy Roman Empire and win hegemony over Europe, 
the other European powers coalesced to restore the balance. But when they finally succeeded in 1814-1815, the victorious powers, Russia, Britain, Austria and Prussia, did not simply restore the state-centered system of the pre-Napoleonic period. They would act in concert on the basis of a novel security culture in which international peace was tied to monarchical orders within individual states. On this basis, the five now took collective responsibility over European stability and prosperity. With greater emphasis on European cooperation came the increased exclusion of non-Europeans, non-Christian powers. Europe as a shared civilization. The idea of Europe in modern times can be explained by the example of the vision of the 1863 founded International Committee for Relief for the Wounded, later renamed into International Committee of the Red Cross. Its vision of Europe in the 19th century was twofold. On the one hand, Europeans were believed to share the same values that made transnational cooperation possible in the first place. On the other hand, the idea of alleged superiority was used to propagate these principles around the globe, including the justification of colonial force and even violence in those areas that did not yet adhere to perceived European standards. The civilizational idea of Europe had a long tradition rooted in Christianity and was still very influential in the 19th century. Europe as a community of nation-states. Challenges to the Vienna order came primarily from the related new ideology ideologies of liberalism and nationalism, which produced alternative concepts of a European order based on nation-states. These ideas implied the destruction of the political solution created in Vienna, such as the introduction of Habsburg control in the Italian peninsula, the continued parti partition of Poland, and the German Confederation, a defensive alliance of 39 princes and free cities meant to deter French revisionism as well as stabilize Central Europe. For many revolutionaries in 1848, nationalist aims and the European movement were not mutually, mutually exclusive. The failure of the revolutions in 1848, however, strengthened the argument of those wanting to impose nationalist goals over the idea of freedom and a European unity. Pacifists, liberal and socialist ideas of Europe. Above all, 19th century Europe was marked by accelerated industrialization, technological innovation and new ways of consuming and circulating goods across regions. The breakthrough of capitalist modes of production and the era of mass consumption led to formation of new societal organizations and the forging of new networks for transnational cooperation. Though different in their core objectives, many of these actors and networks agreed on implicit or explicit visions of humanitarianism and strove for a united Europe as the basis for long-lasting peace on the continent. Focusing on unity and cooperation, the main goal was to achieve a perpetual peace. While heterogeneous in their political and ideological outlook, Many of these movements and groups shared the hope that a European Federation would end military conflict and provide political stability for the continent. Over the course of the 19th century, industrial workers and subsequently the labour movement emerged as a new political subject. The European labour movement was initially a very heterogeneous group of different ideological and political streams. In 1848, attempting to unify these divergent currents, the German philosophers Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels published the Manifesto of the Communist Party, which relied heavily on a negative vision of Europe. The International Workingsmen's Association, also called First International, 
founded in London in 1864 with the aim to improve the international standing and networking of industrial workers and envisioning a united Europe. Conclusion of the second part. In the aftermath of the French Revolution, different and often opposing ideas of Europe thrived over the continent. Older notions of European civilization survived or were adapted to new times. Meanwhile, contemporary developments such as industrialization and the rise of nationalist movements, as well as political revolutions, had produced new ideas like a United State of Europe. The development of the modern political spectrum of conservatism, liberal, liberalism and socialism over the course of the 19th century was closely related to these new notions of Europe, with each camp articulating their own visions. In the context of the rise of modern nationalist movements, pacifist ideas of a perpetual peace gained importance as a solution to the conflicts that the national struggles generated. Ideas of Europe in Contemporary History At the beginning of the 20th century, European civilization extended far beyond the geographical borders of the continent. Colonies and dominions throughout the world belonged to this cultural Europe. This reach of what was considered European culture provided a feeling of exceptionality for many inhabitants in the European metropoles. At the same time, the power and reach of European culture had begun to be challenged. Nation building at home, along with the increasing participation of people in politics on the national level, had also become important issues. One of the pillars of this cultural-based European identity was Western Christianity. At the beginning of World War I, there were two empires on the territory of geographical Europe with predominantly Orthodox or Muslim populations, the Russian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. The Habsburg Empire was also home to a substantial minority of non-Western Christian subjects. By the end of World War I, all these empires were gone and were replaced by many newly established states. The First World War and the 1920s The First World War was a seminal event for the development of the European idea in the 20th century. After a deadly war between the European countries, hopes of overcoming nationalism and building a common identity grew among many Europeans. The post-war period was also marked by the international affirmations of the United States. Many of the newly formed states in East and Southeast Europe, such as Czechoslovakia, Romania, were composed of heterogeneous parts and had to put themselves on the map. They engaged in nation-building activities and had to fight for their own survival in the new post-war order, looking for geographical patterns. In various states, political parties, labor and trend, uh, trade unions, as well as politicians, developed plans to improve a European economic entity and new ideas about European collaboration. The 1930s and the Second World War the fragile blossoming of the European idea during the 1920s was crushed first by the start of the Great Depression in 1929 and the worsening of protectionism already present in the previous decade, and then by the rise of nationalism and strengthening of authoritarian, fascist and Nazi regimes, a process that had started in East Central Europe already in the 1920s. Conservative designs of Europe in the 1920s and 30s often combined anti-American and anti-Bolshevik sentiments with an elitist and hierarchical social model. The most violent of these designs was undoubtedly the Lebensraum, living space, concept of the Nazis. Whether as democratic republic or authoritarian dictatorship, Germany was the economic center of gravity for the states of Southeast Europe, 
Even after it became clear that the Nazi New Order was a lethal, was, was lethal vortex for them, the pro-German part of the public understood these Nazi plans as a new euro. Post-1945 In the years immediately following the Second World War, all European nation-states were working to rebuild their economies and people's livelihoods. During the Cold War, Europe, as an idea, was primarily associated with the defense of democracy and liberty from the powers behind the Iron Curtain. The United States took lead in reorganizing Europe. In the West, though the issue of European identity was not yet at the forefront, the European idea blossomed again in the post-1945 period. Various movements on the national as well as the international level advocated for the establishment of a united Europe to promote both peace and socio-economic prosperity in an increasingly interconnected world. The post-war years featured a great variety of European ideas that circulated within countless organizations, parties and civic movements aiming to create a stable, prosperous and peaceful Europe. The establishment of the European Coal and Steel Community in 1951-52 and the signing of the Treaty of Rome in 1957-58, which created the initial six-member European Community, was one venture among many aiming to implement these ideas in the context of a new political and socio-economic socio institutions and common rule set. For those who lived in the eastern part of the continent, behind the Iron Curtain, the idea of Europe appeared in the concept of East Central Europe. The end of the Cold War reinvigorated the European ideas. For those to the east of the fallen Iron Curtain, Europe was identified again with the West a concept that has its origin in the idea of the Occident, but without Christian connotations. Another important phenomenon of the post-Cold War period was the fact that the European idea, promoted since the beginning of the 20th century primarily by the continent's elites, became an important issue for European public discourse, as shown by the debates on the Maastricht Treaty and the treaty establishing a constitution for Europe in 2004-2005. The European idea became an important subject of debate. This debate often centered on a particular institutionalization of European idea, which was often considered too bureaucratic or not democratic enough. Since then, much progress has been made in the fields of Europeanization of education, free movement, and even social benefits, through, for example, the Erasmus scheme for student mobility. Still, the idea of Europe, or rather the EU, also became identified with overly bureaucratic institutions, weak democratic participation, and insufficient political representation for its citizens. Recurring crises, such as the financial crisis of 2008, have aggravated pre-existing anti-European sentiments across diverse social strata and political parties in Europe. The current steep rise of anti-Europeanism is therefore one of the major challenges to the European idea at present. Conclusion of the third part. Arguably, the idea of Europe was never tested as it was during the 20th century a time when the continent was devastated by unprecedented violence and bloodshed, driven by ideological divisions and divided between two superpowers locked in a seemingly endless standoff. At the same time, by the end of the century, the idea of a united, peaceful and prosperous Europe had become an everyday experience for most people on the continent. These two extremes characterize the development of ideas of Europe in the 20th century. Throughout the crisis of the first half of the century, when the reality of a united Europe seemed further away than ever, 
The idea of Europe was proposed as a solution to the continent's upheavals, as a common goal in peace and prosperity. After 1945, this vision of European unity was limited mostly to Western Europe and framed by the ideolog ideological struggle between East and West. When this vision was put into practice under American guidance, it lost some of its allure through the apparent bureaucratic nature and democratic deficit of European institutions. However, when the Cold War ended, the reality and idea of Europe, embodied for many by the supranational institutions of the European Union, seems stronger than ever and the natural model for the whole continent. Since then, the lived idea of a united Europe has lost some of its sheen, weathering internal and external crises, and has had to face growing criticism by anti-European movements.